Hello, uh, today what we're gonna be looking at is the impact of inflation on stock prices. Okay, so we know a change of inflation is a change in our price level. Okay, the example that I have popping up right here is General Electric, and this is a real-time quote. You can see the price is changing. Uh, so this is showing a price of $26.57. And we're gonna look at this here and see what happens if we have an increase in inflation, okay? The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna start off this with a cap M. All right, the way we're gonna start this off is with a cap M approach, right? And if you recall, the cap M is going to be the required return is equal to the risk-free rate plus beta multiplied by the risk premium, okay? And we're just gonna throw some numbers in here. Currently, we have approximately a 3% risk-free rate. We have a beta, which is generated right off of this table here at the 1.48. Uh, and then we have a risk premium. Let's just say our risk premium right now is at five percentage points. Okay, so that's going to show us we're going to have approximately a 10.5 percent interest rate. Okay, or excuse me, or 10.5 percent required return on General Electric. Now, me personally, I think that's probably a little bit of a high of a required return. I feel like this beta here is probably a little bit high, uh, but you know we're working with the data that, that we're looking at right now. So we're showing a required return of 10.5%. Okay, now we can put this into our discount dividend model or the constant growth model, right? Uh, which is basically telling us that our price today is equal to our dividend today multiplied by one plus our growth rate divided by R minus G, right? So off of our table, we are given D0, which has given us our dividend yield here at 92 cents, okay? And then we're going to use a growth rate here um, and just backing this out using this information right here. This is showing us we have a growth rate of 6.3%. So this is going to be 1.063. And that is going to be then divided by the required return, right? 0 0.105 minus 0 0.063. And that's going to pull us out and bring us out to a number which is right around right there at 26.58. Okay. Now, what can happen is that if we have inflation, right? Inflation means that the price level rises. When the price level rises, that means that we're going to have adjustments to our interest rates, okay? So this is going to impact the base interest rate. This is going to impact that risk-free rate, okay? It is not going to have no, it's going to have no impact on the risk premium, okay? So this is just the additional premium on top of the risk-free rate. But we're going to just look at this because what's going to happen when we have high levels of inflation, that means that the required return, the base level, is going to have to increase. Okay. So let's say that we have um, our inflation went up from near zero where it's at today and it goes up to two percentage points. Okay, it goes up two percentage points. That means our new risk-free rate is going to be five percent. This other stuff here is going to remain the same. Right, and so that means that we're going to have a required return now on GE of 12.5 percent. Okay, 12.5 percent. So we can plug that in up here using all the same information. We still have the same level of of growth, and this is now going to be 1.125 minus 0 0.063. The only change here is in this required return because of the inflation. The inflation happens, which impacts that base, the risk-free rate, which then impacts the required return on General Electric, which then gets plugged into our Gordon growth model and is going to have a different price. So when we're looking at this, just looking at the equation here, we have these two differences. The only difference is this amount right here. When any number in the denominator increases, what happens to the total number? The total number is going to fall. So we know that when we have inflation, unexpected inflation, okay, is that the price level is going to fall. Okay. And this drops us down to a current price of $15.77. Okay, so a relatively small change in inflation can have a big impact on the change in stock prices. Okay, so this might be one of those things when, whenever we're looking at 
uh, or hearing about the news or what's going on is we want to evaluate. You hear somebody saying, oh, the Fed is, is manipulating interest rates. Oh, we're afraid of inflation. We're afraid of this, that, and the other thing. It's because when it does happen, the stock prices are going to change. And the reason that people call it so close is so that they can make the change. Because if you know the price is going to drop from 26 down to, to 1577, what should you do right now? Sell it. Get out of it. Turn that General Electric stock into cash. And then you can buy it back later, right? Because you don't want to lose 10 bucks a share, okay? But that's the basic thing that happens when we have a change in inflation. Inflation rises, stock prices fall, all right?